Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all keeping well. My name's Liz and on this channel we do exactly as it's called, we talk all about history. So for this week we are back in England plus other places but you soon get to know why I say that. So for this week's video it's it's going to be one of two for definite, maybe, well, maybe four, we'll see. Um, this video is going to be all about Henry the first illegitimate daughters. So the second video will be on his sons. I want to do two separate videos because Henry had so many illegitimate children and they all deserve their own story. So I will try, I, I've tried to find as much information on his daughters as possible, but unfortunately it's just not there because it wasn't recorded at that time. So I will try my absolute best. So if this is something you are interested in, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Also, I want to apologise ahead because there is a few um, challenging pronunciations. So I will really, really try. And this is someone who struggled to pronounce her name half the friggin' time. It's just because I can't pronounce that shit. But I do try. I really, really try. So I hope you enjoy the video. Enjoy. <laughs> Henry I holds the record of any English monarch with the most acknowledged illegitimate children. It was estimated that he had at least 22 children, but it could have been more who simply weren't written. Henry's children, all of which he acknowledged, had more daughters than sons. Now, unfortunately, there isn't much written about the daughters. Clearly, the chroniclers at the time preferred to write more about his sons, especially Robert, Earl of Gloucester, who was said to have been Henry's eldest um, child born. He was born before Henry became king, and he was also said to have been Henry's favourite. So the birth dates and the birth order of his illegitimate children are uncertain as Henry had many mistresses and there's not much known about them, which is a real shame. And many of his illegitimate children, their mothers are unknown. So Henry had nine sons, all of which he had recognised as his own. Now, when it comes to his daughters, the numbers are less certain, as there were several, such as Sybil, Queen of Scotland, um, Matilda, Countess of Perche, and Juliana, who are known to be Henry's. There are some that are mentioned in charters, such as Adelaide, and there is one possible daughter but her name wasn't recorded. There is also Rohise who was a daughter of Henry's mistress um, Sybil Corbett who was but is also unknown whether she was actually Henry's daughter. Then there is also Sybil of Falaise who was recorded to be a relative of Henry's but the exact relationship is unknown. And then there is Emma who is speculated to be Henry's daughter but there is no definite evidence and she was born after Henry's death. Henry had only one legitimate daughter who was Empress Matilda. Now, just to make things even more confusing, Henry had three illegitimate daughters all named Matilda. Now, if that wasn't enough, Constance was also sometimes referred to as Matilda. This is going to be fun so many matildas yay matilda is in all fairness is a very pretty name it's a very pretty name but i've got the film in my head now 
I really want to watch the film with you. Actually, we made it. Actually, I don't know. They made it. But I, anyway, I, I love the original. So, yeah, that's my childhood. Brilliant film. Anyway, anyway, I'm rambling. Let's go on. So today's video is just on Henry's illegitimate daughters. They're not in order, but the confirmed daughters come first. So first up, we have Sybil of Normandy. Now, Sybil was the only one of Henry's illegitimate daughters to marry a king. Sybil married Alexander I, Scotland, um, King of Scotland. And this was around 1107. Now, Sybil appears to be one of Henry's older children born in the early 1090s. So Sybil and Alexander, they had no children, but the couple seemed to have been devoted to one another. Sybil was noted for her piety and she died on the 13th of July in 1122. And after her death, Alexander planned to dedicate a priory to her memory. Secondly, we have Matilda or Maud Fitzroy, and she married Duke Conan III of Brittany. This was before 1113. They had three children together. The identity of Matilda's mother is unknown. When Conan was on his deathbed, it was reported that he disinherited their only son, saying that he wasn't um, his father. But there's nothing that in indicates Matilda as being guilty of adultery. So the reason for Conan saying that remains a mystery. Thirdly, we have Matilda of Persh. She had married Count Wantro the third of Persh in 1103. They had two daughters together. Now, Matilda's mother was named Edith. However, there's nothing known about her origins. Matilda died on the 25th of November, 1120. She was sadly involved in the White Ship disaster um, with her brother, William, but also her other illegitimate brother, Richard. William had a, 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 a initially, 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 for Christ's sake, woman, initially <laughs> been rescued from the shipwreck, but she and he was being rowed back to shore. However, he heard his sister screaming. For help so he ordered the boat to be turned around to rescue his sister and as they was going back the small boat became swamped with other victims of the wreck who were desperately trying to climb on board and this had caused the small boat to break apart. Juliana now Juliana's mother was possibly Henry's mistress named Ansfried who had also given birth to two sons, Richard and Falk. Now, unfortunately, Richard also died in the White Ship disaster. And Falk, he had become a monk. Juliana was one of Henry's eldest illegitimate daughters, possibly born in the early 1090s. Now, she had married Eustace de Pacey in 1103. Now, Juliana played an important part in a rebellion against her own father. Juliana deserves her own video, which will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So please do subscribe so you don't miss that video coming up. Next, we have Constance, who was also sometimes referred to as Matilda. Her mother's identity is unknown. Constance had married Ros Roskelin, I think, um, Vice Count of Beaumont before 1130. Now, Constance was born in 1102 in Leicester and she died in, well, after. The exact date of her death wasn't recorded, but it was after 1173. So either way, Constance lived to an amazing age of either 88 or 89, given the fact we're in the 12th century 
that is an amazing age and she was buried in France. Next we have Mabel. Now Mabel's ident the identity of her mother is unknown. Mabel married Lord William Montbrill and they had one son. Next is Aline or Alice. Her mother's identity is also unknown. Alice married Matthew I of Montmorency in 1126 and they had six children together. Alice died before 1141. Next we have Matilda, abbess of Montfilas. Montfilas? I think that's right. Uh, her mother's identity is also unknown and Matilda had supported her legitimate sister empress matilda next we have isabel isabel's mother was isabella de mo de de, de, de be isabella de beaumont the daughter of robert de beaumont earl of leicester and isabel de formande i think that's right Isabel was born in the 1120s, making her possibly one of the youngest um, children born to Henry. She had never married, but she had witnessed um, charters with her mother. Next, we have Adelaide, whose mother was a noblewoman named Edith Fitzfawn. Adelaide had um, a brother... Robert Lord Oakhampton who she appeared in charters with but other than that there's nothing else known about her. So now moving on to those who may have been Henry's daughters. First is Gundred. She was a daughter of Henry's long-term mistress Sybil Corbett but it's unknown whether she whether Henry was actually the father or if it was Herbert Fitz Herbert who Sybil married. Rohees was also a daughter um, of Sybil Corbett, so it's unknown whether she was actually Henry's daughter or not. And she had married Henry de la Pomeray. Now, Emma. Emma is purely based on a tomb inscription for um, that named her as the daughter of a king it didn't say henry it just said a king that's all the evidence there is to connect emma to henry but emma had married guy the fourth of um laval now her daughter-in-law was also called emma now, her daughter-in-law, Emma, was the daughter of Reginald, Earl of Cornwall, who was King Henry I's illegitimate son. So, for that Emma, who was thought to be Henry's daughter, it seems quite unlikely as... Clearly, it was her daughter-in-law, Emma, who was the granddaughter of Henry I. Things get a little bit lost over the years and it gets confusing. And unfortunately, there's just not the information that, that survives. And it's such a shame. There is two further women who may or may not have been Henry's. Sybil of Falaise who married Baldwin de Bullers, I apologise if I pronounced that wrong, who was described as a kinswoman or a niece to Henry I, but she may have been Henry's niece, so she may have been born to um, Robert, Duke of Normandy, who was Henry's older brother. Now, lastly... There's an unnamed daughter who had married Fergus, Lord of Galloway. They had three children together. There are some sources who called her Elizabeth or Joan. 
but there is no contemporary sources for her name. Now, the marriage hinted to the fact that documents mention Ferguson's children and grandchildren being related to Henry. And that's all there is on Henry's illegitimate daughters. So Henry, most of his illegitimate daughters were married to lords or minor lords along the Norman border. And Henry most likely or most very likely arranged all of the marriages for his illegitimate daughters. And this was to cement alliances with his Normandy neighbours. As for Sybil, who married King Alexander I of Scotland, it was either just to keep that attached, because uh, obviously Matilda would, his wife Matilda died at this point. So it's whether to keep that connection there, that alliance with Scotland that he married Sybil to um, King Alexander I. We don't know whether he arranged that or whether it's even Alexander who approached Henry as if they, you know, I really like your daughter. I'd like her to be Queen of Scotland. We don't know which way it went. But either way, I really, really hope you enjoyed the video. I try to find as much information as I can. There will be a video on Juliana to come up because that woman to try to kill your own father with a crossbow, fair play girl, you deserve your own video. So that will be coming up soon and I will do a video on Henry's illegitimate sons and obviously he had the one most famous son who played a big part in the anarchy. So Robert might be getting his own video too, but please do like, share, subscribe, all the good things so we can reach more and more history lovers like yourselves. I hope you enjoy the video. Please do look after yourselves. Just take that time for you. Things can get hard. We all have our moments where you just want to go. <laughs> we all have them, but just take time for you. See you all soon. Look after yourself.